In the places you have been pressed, God is inviting you to pursue, to overtake, and without fail, recover all. I have a prophetic word today for fathers and families for the month of July. One of the things the Lord has been speaking to us for several months is that July is a month where families are going to begin to start flourishing. In the places that you've been pressed, you're about to prosper and you're about to produce. And by August, everything that has worked against you, you're going to recognize was working for you as the floodgates of God's blessing and goodness and glory open wide in the month of August. You know, today we're going to look at the life of David just in a, in a short form. I would encourage you to go look at these texts and read through them because there is so much revelation to be found within these passages. I was just telling my son Josh, I said, man, I would love to do a, a version of the Bible to where we take all of the, the names, the proper names of people and places and provide the definition or the meaning of those names because there is so much revelation hidden within names that reveals nature. And when we understand the nature of our season, we can partner with the appropriate way of the Lord to prevail, to overcome, and to walk in victory. And so again, today we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 30. And as I've been praying for you, for those who've been watching these podcasts from all around the world, as you've liked and subscribed to this channel, and you've been commenting on how these words have meant so much to you, God has just really given me a heart for the viewers um, and, and to, to encourage you, to equip you, and to empower you, no matter where you're watching from around the world. In fact, let us know in the comments where you're watching from, and again, how these words are speaking to you, and let it, testi- let it prophesy, let your testimony prophesy to others of the goodness of God and the glory of Jesus Christ. In 1 Samuel 30, we see how David had been rejected by the Philistines. And you know it's a bad day when when you when you you know your own people abandon you and 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 what you're called to, it looks like the door is open and then you decide to go ahead and give energy and effort to the very thing that has tried to keep you from your call and they reject you as well. And oftentimes there can be seasons in our life when it seems like every door of opportunity is shut so that the one door that Jesus is opening for us becomes our only option. You know, even in this year of 2024 and it being a year of the open door, one of the things that I've prayed for so many is not just that God would open doors that no man could shut, but I've prayed a lot more that God would shut doors that no man could open because there's a lot of other alternative doors that will keep you from the door of your destiny. Paul said in in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, God has set before me a great and effective door, but there are many adversaries. And typically, I've recognized even in my life, the easy door is oftentimes not the best door. It's oftentimes the door that has a giant standing on either side. That's the doorway that brings us into the land of promise as we begin to allow those giants to become our daily bread. So again, David had been rejected by the Philistines. He had been rejected uh, even by some that he was called to lead. And he was clearly God's anointed man for that hour. But in 1 Samuel chapter 30, it says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had evaded the south and Ziklag and attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and taken captive the women and those who were with them from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters, and all of their possessions had been taken captive. David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Verse 5, and David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, Nabal the Carmelite, had also been taken captive. Verse 6, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David sent to Abiathar the priest, um, 
Ahuluk's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So in verse 8, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake and without fail recover all. Now, in this passage, first, let's look at where they were in life. The word ziklag actually means winding. It's a twisted path. It's a crooked place. But it actually comes from a Hebrew uh, root word that means to press mentally uh, in order to reveal what is on the inside. Has anybody out there been battling just with the fiery darts of the enemy in a way that has pressed your mind? where the thoughts have warred against what God has promised to you. And again, this word specifically is to fathers and to families, because I believe that there are fathers out there that have been walking through a pressing season. But I want to encourage you, if you will begin to position yourself to strengthen yourself, pursue, overtake, that without fail, by God's Spirit, you will recover all that the enemy has tried to torment you with the fear of potential loss. Oftentimes, when we have a fear of loss, that can cause us to lean into our own strength. But anytime I've recognized the fear of loss trying to touch my heart or touch my mind, there is a fear of the Lord that God was wanting to bring us into. Anytime I had a fear of of, of, of losses are related to family or relationship or even finance. Typically, I would recognize that the enemy was simply overplaying his hand and I could flip what the enemy was saying 180 degrees and God was wanting, to see, wanting me to see the exact opposite of what the enemy was trying to speak to my thoughts. And so I encourage you, if your thoughts are not good, If they're not to prosper, if they're not connected to a future and a hope, those are not thoughts that God is thinking toward you and you should not think about. We can always tell the author of the thoughts that we're thinking because of the fruit of that tree in our life. So again, those who have been pressed, God is inviting you to pursue. Their wives were taken, their sons and their daughters, and they were not killed, but they were taken away, which elevated the potential for fear because not only were they taken, but now the fear of what is happening to them while they are not present with me. And as I'm speaking to you right now, you fathers, God has anointed you and appointed you as protectors, as, as, as godly sources of resource, not as a provider in your own strength, but a conduit of his blessing to those you love. And, and, and I know what it's like to feel that sense of responsibility for the, the care and the well-being of those you love. And that was, that was being tested by what they walked through, right? Now, David's two wives, again, it was a Ahinoam and Abigail. Interesting, they were two women, but their names actually had male uh, meanings. In fact, the name Ahinoam means brother of pleasantness. But didn't David also say in Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. And so the fact that she was taken really is a prophetic type shadow and insight that it was the unity of the brethren that was under attack. She was a person that was taken, but the position that God was wanting to bring them into was to have a unity that would bring the commanded blessing of the Lord, not just on the army, but also in the families connected to these fathers. Abigail means father of joy. But when you look deeper into that meaning, the word that they, they, they translate as father means source. And so it was an attack on his joy. It was an attack on unity. It was an attack on joy. And see, it was in the pressing thoughts that the enemy was after his joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. It was in those pressing thoughts that he was trying to bring division where God was calling them to be united because united they stand, divided they would fall. And so again, Joy is a faith-based emotion. It is voice-activated. And the Lord told us at the beginning of this year that the oil of joy is the anointing for 2024. I don't have the time in this podcast to 
to go in depth on joy, but we have a ton of resources on our YouTube channel from Sunday services and previous Kingdom Living podcasts to where you can go back and look more at what God has been speaking about the importance of joy, peace, and hope in this season. It says in Romans 15, 13, that the God of hope would what? Fill you with all joy, all peace, and all believing. And I had an encounter with the Lord in December of 2023, where he gave me a helmet of the hope of salvation. You can see that in 1 Thessalonians. And when the Lord gave that to me, a supernatural joy came on my life, and it came with a peace just a, an absolute confidence. It didn't mean that there have not been storms. In fact, there, you know, I've walked through a, a somewhat stormy season, as many of you fathers probably have. But the truth is, is oftentimes the storm reveals the peace that you're planted in because it's remaining at rest in trust regardless of what life throws at you. Amen? So David was greatly distressed. The word distress means that he was bound or he felt trapped. Have you ever felt trapped by a situation not knowing what to do, almost kind of frozen in a place of indecision, knowing that something needs to be done, but you just feel like the walls of your situation are closing in? I'm speaking to you right now that that lie is breaking off of your life, and where you felt the walls were closing in, I've got great news. The roof is coming off. Hallelujah. In the same way that in Mark chapter 2, they broke through the roof, and they brought their friend to Jesus. And not only was he forgiven, but he was healed and he was made whole. I want to tell you, you're coming into a season where even as you're pressed from your left and your right, there is an upward call to ascend and to come up higher. Just like the Lord spoke through the, John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 4, 1, behold, there is a, a door standing open to you in heaven. Come up here that you might hear and see for a time to come. And this is the time where specifically I believe that God is inviting fathers to come up into that heavenly place, to not seek wisdom and understanding based on what you see in the world around you. But Colossians 3 says, set your mind on things above, not things of this earth, that you be hidden with Christ and God. Psalm 2 4 says that uh, those who are seated in heaven laugh. And so again, joy is one of the evidence of a heavenly mindset. Joy is one of the fruits of having a renewed mind. And joy is a catalyst for transformation in your life that'll turn the tide in the lives of those around you. So not only was David distressed for the people spoke of stoning him, uh, and these were the guys that you know, nobody wanted them. And he gave them a place. He created a sense of belonging, not just for them, but also for their families. And the ones he had helped the most now were about to kill him. Hallelujah. And uh, because the soul of all the people was what? Grieved. That word grieve means bitter. And see, bitter is the fruit of the root of offense. And what happened was they had taken an offense toward David because of what had happened to them personally. Have you ever blamed someone for what happened in your life? See, there is a humility of heart we recognize, wait a minute, what, what do I not see that I need to see? I tell our folks all the time, anytime that sadness tries to come on you, there's something that you don't see because sadness is attached to the perception of loss. But Jesus said in John 6, nothing the Father has given to me will be lost and it will all be raised up, resurrected, restored, and returned to me on the last day. So not only were the people grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. That word strengthen means that he put on courage and he made the decision to behave valiantly. He didn't, he didn't take up the woe is me. He took up the is there not a cause? He took ownership of the opportunity. And here with 400 men and 400 families, he said, what is it that I can do, God, that's gonna bring breakthrough in the lives of the ones who are seeking to take my life? What can I do to bring them into your abundant life that they would have life to the full until it overflows? And again, he said, shall I pursue and overtake? And God took it one step further. He saw his pursue and overtake and he raised him without fail, recover all. He was saying, David, if you do this, I'm gonna cause this to happen 
for you. So David went and the 600 men who were with him, I'm, I apologize, I said 400 earlier, it was 600. And so they had, they had grown in number and came to the brook Bazor. Now, Bazor means cheerful. It means good tidings, which is the preaching of the gospel. And see, the gospel always requires a choice. Are we going to return to our past or are we going to embrace the work of the blood and the power of God's grace in a way that allows us to cross over into a new place? place. It says that when they came to the Brook Bazaar, where they where these stayed, uh, um, the, where, where these stayed who were left behind. But David pursued. And so what he's saying is, of those men, some were more connected to the fear in the present based on the past experience, because of what they had experienced prior to David coming into their life, because all they knew was loss. And they went back to saying, okay, this feels like that. And in that place, they were not willing to walk in the goodness and to cross over into a new place. Verse 10, David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind him who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Bazor. And see, one of the things that says in Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary, let us not grow weary. Let us not grow, let us not begin to be worn down. And I have seen, whether it's people or even leaders, to where, you know, there can be a, a, a well, you know, it says, let us not grow weary in well doing, for in due season we reap. I was in a meeting last night and I could see where even a leader was continued, uh, just continuing to have to address certain issues. And there was an emotional fatigue and even just kind of a mental weariness that began to get on him. And then when he excused himself to go to the restroom, I went, I went there too. Uh, not to agree with what was being said about him, but to remind him who he was, say, there is a great work that you're called to. Let's get back on the wall and let's finish this thing. Amen. Verse 11, then they found an Egyptian. I love this in the field. And they brought him to David and they gave him bread and he ate and they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So like a little Debbie, hallelujah. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him for he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, to whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. Now, again, it was the Amalekites. It was this place of, of attack. Now, Amalekite in Deuteronomy 25, it says they are those who attack from the rear. They attack from your back when you're tired and weary to pick off the stragglers. And I've recognized in this season spiritually, naturally, um, even in um, e even in areas of the world, whether it be even politically, how there has almost been in this place where the enemy would try to wear down the saints, there's been an attack from the back that would try to take people out when they begin to lose their place, when they're no longer on that front foot of faith, but they begin to lose their strength because their mind has become weary. And if you have been in that place of feeling weary, if you have been in that place, I want to pray for you right now for a second wind, for a fresh fire, and that you would get back as a father on the front line of leading your family as the head of your house and God's appointed and anointed leader in their life. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I even speak to the natural physical attacks on the back, right? Now, I speak to that left shoulder, play, shoulder blade for what has felt almost like a, a stabbing pain that with like almost an electrical impulse that has reverberated to where it'll come on, it'll bite, and then all of a sudden there's almost like this electrical thing where it feels like a nerve issue. I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus for that to be pulled out. I speak right now that the glory of God would be your rear guard and no longer would you go by haste nor go by flight. No longer would you have to operate from a place of pressure, but that you would begin to pursue, overtake, and recover all as the Lord goes before you. I speak healing to your backside right now in Jesus' name. But then he goes on, he said, we made an invasion of the southern area of the Cherethites in the territory which belongs to to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said, so you can, can you take me to these guys? See, what happened was his enemy had become his footstool. Why? Because he blessed his enemy. 
he actually began to bless those who had, because this Egyptian was part of the attack that had taken their families. And so instead of them killing him, they began to show him kindness. They began to bless those who had cursed, prayed for those who used. And in that place, God took what the enemy had meant for their harm, and he used it for their good. The very thing, this representative of what had worked against them, God now gave insight and understanding to where what had worked against them was about to work for, him, for them. What's interest, interesting is they attacked through the territory, the unoccupied territory of Judah. And so fathers, as you have been pressed, have you have been walking through that place of Ziklag, you've been walking through that mental attack, I wanna encourage you. One of the best ways that you can posture yourself to pursue, overtake, and allow the Lord to bring you into a place where recovering all is to occupy the gates of praise. You see, praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Not only do we enter his courts with praise, but every time God was leading the nation of Israel in breakthrough and in victory, it, it, it always included uh, voices being raised loud and high, getting your eyes off of your enemies and getting them back to the table, getting your eyes off of what has been done to you and beginning to give glory to God for what he's about to do for you. I'm calling you fathers to the front line of praise. Some of you even have on Sunday services, maybe you've sat in the back because maybe you don't feel as expressive in worship. Maybe you're more reserved. I wanna encourage you to be like David and enter into a place of worship and praise to where not, not because it's forced, not because you feel compelled, but to, because you've had a revelation of God's goodness in your life. We see in 2 Samuel chapter six that when the ark, the blessing, the presence, the glory of God was restored to the city of David, David danced until his clothes came off. And he was actually criticized by Michael, one of his wives. And she criticized his worship saying, listen, you're acting like a fool. What did he say? Girl, I'm gonna be more undignified than this. If you had the revelation that I have of what God has done for me, you'd be dancing with me. You'd be shouting with me. Come on, you'd be having a praise party with me. And I wanna encourage you to get your shout back. Get your praise back. Begin to elevate your praise to a higher place. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it says that when the nation of Judah came to a certain place, so it's when praise came to a certain place overlooking the valley of plunder, that was when the enemies were turned on each other. And we're seeing this, even in the governmental realm, as the church is spending more time praising and less time talking about problems, more time prophesying into and less time praying about. We're seeing how the praise is beginning to elevate. The prophetic accuracy and anointing is beginning to elevate. And in that, we're seeing not just in the governmental realm, but you're going to begin to see in every area of your life to where the things that have come against you begin to turn on each other other, and you won't even have to fight in your own strength because praise is the weapon of your warfare in this season. You can't give thanks and worry at the same time. They've proven scientifically by studying the brain that, that, that complaining, uh, worry, fear, it exists in the same part of the brain, and the brain is not capable of, of giving thanks of, of being grateful and being worried at the same time. And see, every time that you find yourself pressed and agreeing with worry, instead of pressed and choosing to worship, what you're doing is you're actually coming out of alignment with your assignment. And see, it's interesting, worry and worship both start the same way, W-O-R. And we can't control what happens to us, but we certainly can control how we respond. And so I'm speaking to you fathers, pick up your praise. Come on, begin to begin to pick up those, those prophetic mantles to begin to give God glory. And I'm not even talking that you've got to sing the words on a screen. I'm saying right there in the bathroom. I'm saying when you're driving to work, maybe turn off all of the outside noises and just have yourself a time of just beginning to give thanks, beginning to praise God for his goodness and watch how your perspective begins to change. It goes on to say, uh, verse 17, David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped except 400 men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all and the Amalek, all that the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives. So he got back the unity and he got back the source of his joy and nothing of theirs was lacking either small or great sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them, and David recovered all. And I want to encourage you, 
in the same way that they had a thief show up to try to steal, kill, and destroy, we oftentimes can experience what looks like loss at first glance. But I want to tell you, there is new life in what looks like loss. There is increase in what looks like decrease when we begin to turn our eyes to the Lord. Amen? It says in Proverbs 6.31, if a thief is caught in the act, they have to do what? Pay back sevenfold. When Jesus was on the cross, he hung between what? Two thieves. One was a picture of yesterday. The other was a picture of worrying about tomorrow. And where was Jesus? Right in the middle of those two thieves. One thief was in bondage to what he had done and the guilt and the shame. The other thief was in bondage to where he was going. And I want to encourage you to turn your worry into worship and enjoy the gift of your present. I'm going to close with this wonderful quote from Kung Fu Panda with some tremendous wisdom. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift, and that is why it's called the present. Give praise in your presence, in your present, as you pursue and you prophesy in the place you have felt pressed and watch the gift of new hope, new joy, great peace, and abundance come to you. This is a recover all season. July is a month that your family will flourish, but it's going to be the fathers that lead the way. I bless you, fathers. Thanks for listening to Kingdom Living with Pastor Jason Hooper. If this episode blessed you, please take a moment and rate and review this show on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever you listen. Also, be sure to follow Kingsway Church on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe on YouTube to discover even more kingdom content. We pray you're richly encouraged and equipped by this broadcast of Kingdom Living.